Okay, so we now have a predefined data structure, and it's moving from, we'll say that this is A, B, C, right? We have um, 26 branches. Each one of them have the same uh, kind of format of A, B, C, and each one of them has uh, 10 items at the end of every list. Okay, so um, let's then talk about what we can do with this, right? If we wanted to, right, we could just draw some curves that correspond to uh, these points as if the each list was going to be uh, wh where we wanted a curve, right? So if we go to the Curve tab, and let's say that we use from the spline menu an interpolate curve. If I plug P into V, right, turn some previews off here so we can see this a little bit better. We now have curves that are being drawn through our list of points where this is moving in the V direction, but we have 26 of them in the U direction. Okay, that's great, right? But And that's fun. We can uh, very easily use this data structure for each branch to draw a single curve. But that wasn't exactly what we want. We want to go from... Um, Let's see if I turn the grid off here. We want to go from this point to this point to this point to this point. We want to draw quads on our surface that are um, created from polylines. So now we need to find a way to move through this data structure, but um, in a way that actually allows us to bounce not only through lists, but also laterally the other direction between data branches. All right, so we need to um, review a couple of different uh, data tree objects that we're going to use from Grasshopper. So we'll bounce back over to the presentation. And the first one that we're going to use is Simplify. And this one's great. Uh, this is one that you'll find yourself using very frequently. After every action that you do, you'll find yourself checking the data structure and see if you need to change it or simplify it in any way so that it, it, its organization is clearer to you. So simplify removes the overlapping branches in a data tree. So if we go back to our uh, diagram again here where we have uh, a data tree that looks like this, right? Um, what we're going to be wanting to do is um, simplify it so that all of the things that are overlapping or that are con uh, consistent across all of the paths they're all going to go away. So we would go from something like this down to something like this, right? The reason or, or the kind of um, the way to see what is changing between the two options, the before and after, is any any index within all of the paths that does not change. So that's also referred to as overlap, right? All of them come from here, right? So there that particular uh, index within the path is going to go away so that the simplest way to define this data tree actually starts from the origin and just goes one level. So what was 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 just goes down to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? So it simplifies the tree uh, based on um, how many overlapping indices there are. All right, so um, the other thing that we're going to be looking at a lot is clean tree. And clean tree removes all null and invalid entries from a data tree. Null means that there's nothing stored there and there's just an empty placeholder. Right? So whenever an operation fails, it is possible that Grasshopper has created a null or an invalid data tree uh, will be stored within the, uh, sorry, an invalid data item will be stored within the data tree. So the nulls and invalids um, will carry forward through the data structure as you continue to use it because um, Grasshopper is trying to uh, intelligently match the elements that you're using uh, within the inputs of your different objects. Uh, so each time it will carry forward that empty placeholder and um, that can be uh, a little bit frustrating, right? So if we had a diagram that looked something like this, we're back to three levels of A, B, C and we look at the level C, right, um, where each one of these elements, uh, sorry, each one of these paths at the end has a list of one element or data, 
piece of data. If we see that some of them are empty, like these ones that are not uh, filled with green, right? these are empty or invalid uh, items that are within the data structure. So you can see this branch has zero items on it. What will happen with the clean tree is that it will remove all of those uh, items and branches um, that meet that criteria, right? So anything that was empty before, right, not filled with green, now is uh, cleaned up so that we just are keeping the data structure that is important to us. Now, the thing to note is that the data paths are still maintained here, so there are times where you do not want to clean out your nulls or your empty branches, because if I wanted to, in the next part of my file, match up 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 0, I no longer have um, the corresponding data path, right? So it doesn't redefine the paths, it just gets rid of the ones that um, are empty or invalid. And then the last um, object we're going to be looking at, which is going to be uh, using our cleaned and um, simplified trees, is going to be the relative item. And the relative item retrieves a combination of items from a data tree. By that, uh, I mean that whenever we ask for or we supply a data tree, let's say, um, it has a bunch of points in it. If we say that we want to uh, relate across the data tree a certain uh, set of paths using an offset or an offset combo, which is like plus or minus a uh, integer value in for a B and C right we could if we wanted to if we had this data structure and this offset combo of 0 1 1 we could find the pairs that result from the offset relative to each branch with this um, uh, kind of movement index so if I'm at the first path 0 0 0 and I want to find the item that is relative to that that is one away in the B level and one away in the C level, what I do is from 0, 0, 0, I would add these to each one of those index values, and that would find me over here, 0, 1, 1. And from 0, 0, 1, I would find 0, 1, 2. From 0, 0, 2, I would be looking for 0, 1, 3, which doesn't exist in this data structure, so the corresponding item is not kept. Right? So this only will make the connection or find the combination of elements if it can based on your offset. All right? So these are the connections that would be made with this uh, particular offset value. All right? So here's um, uh, one of the um, objects, the, the screen grab of the object we'll be using, which is the relative item, and we'll be using uh, an offset combo each time. Okay, and um, let's come back to prune at the end. Um, so let's bounce back over to our grasshopper file that we've been working with. I'm going to save this before we get too much farther down the line. Uh, again, this is working with predefined data trees. Okay, and we don't need the curves, so I can delete them. And if you want, you can even delete uh, the panel and pram viewer uh, because we're going to be uh, building on our file from here. Okay, so from now, from, uh, at this point, what we have is 26 branches of um, 10 items each, right? So if I wanted to use uh, an offset combo, it would be pretty easy for me to supply the offset to go across the data paths as being 0, 0, 1, right? But we also have to deal with what's going on over here in the list, right? So let's go ahead and um, organize our data structure so that it is nice and tidy and is a little bit more clear in terms of what's happening in the two-dimensional space of our surface. So to do so, we're going to uh, use our friend the graft and simplify at the very beginning. And we're going to see um, uh, how, how uh, this changes the data structure. So we're going to go back to the sets tab. Under tree, let's go ahead and grab the graft as well as the simplify, which is right here in the first collection of items, the simplify tree. All right, so let's pull this down and let's first graft. 
So if I put in, we're going to be using the world points. So P goes into here. So now instead of 26 branches of 10, I have 260 branches because each item is now on its own list. And I've grown my data structure from A, B, C to A, B, C, D. Right, so I now have four levels. And if I scroll down, we'll see that uh, C and D are really the things that, um, that are significant, and A and B are all shared overlap. Right, so let's go ahead and use the simplify then to remove that overlap so we have a nice clean data structure. So we'll take our graph, this goes into T, which is the tree to simplify, and then we'll go ahead and connect up the output of this here, and we now see that we go down to just two levels. So what was, if I compare before and after, what was A, B, C, D now just becomes A, B because the original A, B, were, uh, those, those were both removed, and C, D become A, B. All right, so now it's very clear that our data tree has two significant levels, is essentially two-dimensional, and now it's pretty easy to think about how we might move from any point on here, which we'll say, let's just call this um, um, within here A, B. I want to go one in this direction. This is going to be one in the B. This is going to be one in the, uh, in the A uh, direction relative to an offset. Right? Okay, so if we want to um, be a little bit clearer about what's happening here, uh, let's go ahead and um, show those particular um, items in the Rhino viewport so we know which point is which. It might be a little bit easier for us to understand how to connect a certain point to another. So what we're going to do is, um, let's see, I'll get rid of this and this to keep my file nice and clean for you. All right, we're going to go back to uh, the simplify. We can go ahead and add in a couple labels while we're doing this. Simplify. And graft. All right, so we've grafted our points and then simplified them. All right, so um, we want to use under the vector points tab, we want to use the text tag or the text tag 3D. All right, so if I drop that in, this asks for a location, the text to display and the size of the text. All right, so the location is easy. This is, uh, we want to show some, uh, a tag in Rhino that is uh, at these uh, points, each one of these points. And now we need some sort of text to display. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that uh, object that we said we were going to use a lot, which is the um, tree statistics. So under sets tree, let's go ahead and grab that object and supply our tree, and remember that coming out of P, these are the paths as a list of strings. So if I put that into, oh, hit escape or um, uh, cancel that operation, I'm going to lock my solver and undo. Does anyone know why that took a second um, to think before it um, tried to solve? If you have a suggestion as to uh, what I did wrong there, go ahead and drop it into the questions window and we'll uh, review that. All right, and there are a couple of um, answers that were uh, both correct. The different, uh, the, the, what I did wrong was that um, I, gave a I gave this object both a data tree and a list. So the data matching, uh, it gets confused, right? Because here it's trying to connect every item in the list to each one of the data paths. So I've just done a kind of exponential um, operation, which uh, is not good, right? And it's not going to give me what I want. So I need to um, first do something to this um, uh, wire. Uh, the data that's passing through this wire in order for my text tag to work correctly and for my computer to not potentially crash. So what I'm going to do is graft first P. So if I put my mouse over this, this looks like a data tree, but it's actually just a list of the paths themselves. Whereas here coming into L, this is the data structure 
with elements at each um, on each list. So I'm going to graft the output of P. That goes into T, and now I can unlock my solver. And if I make my uh, size of my text a little smaller, we should be able to see each one of those items. All right, so that's point the point located on path 10-2 and 11-2. So now if I wanted to draw a triangle on every face uh, or, or between the collections of adjacent points, right? it's very easy for me to understand the difference between 10-2 and 11-2, that would be plus 1, and 10-2 and 10-3, which would be 0 plus 1. All right? um, so I'm going to leave those uh, tags in the file so that I can use them as a reference as I build out the rest of our uh, definition with you.